Hello, welcome back to my channel. You're watching Oh She Reads and my name is Oshale. And if you're new here, welcome. Please take the time to like this video. That really helps me out a lot with YouTube algorithms and such. And also please definitely take this moment to subscribe. If you're not new here and you're not subscribed, please subscribe now and like the video and also Thank you and welcome to all my new subscribers. There are a bunch of you who have found my channel recently, so I just want to say welcome and thank you for stopping by. Thank you for joining the Osh fam or the Oshi Reads fam. So in today's video, my dog is whining. It always happens on this channel. If you're not new, you already know what's up. In today's video, we are talking about digital minimalism. Now, digital minimalism is sort of a newish term around here on the interwebs and just in our social cultural norm in general. I haven't actually looked it up. I haven't watched a lot of videos either, but I have watched a few videos. One video that specifically didn't coin the term per se, but did kind of explain where, you know, digital minimalism comes from, the root of it, what it means. I'm not going to be talking about that in this video, so I will definitely try to find some resources for all of you and link them down below, maybe some articles and some things like that if you would like to know more. What I want to talk about in this video is what digital minimalism means to me and how I've incorporated it into my life and how it's made a huge difference in the way that I consume and view media, specifically social media in the per in the past, I would say mm, 60 days or so. So I would say that digital minimalism to me is essentially practicing minimalism with my digital content and with the way that I consume media, specifically social media. So for example, I used to be a person that spent a lot of time on social media. I spent a lot of time scrolling and looking at people's feeds, uh, looking at people's profiles, working on my own feed, my own profile, editing photos, uh, liking photos, watching Instagram stories. I'm not really much of a Facebook person. In fact, I rarely use Facebook and I'm not much of a Twitter person or a Snapchat person. So Instagram was my social media drug of choice, if you will. And I found myself spending hours a day on the app. And I also found myself automatically going to that app whenever I was bored. Uh, I found that whenever I had my phone in my hand, it was a very instinctual thing to just go and click on Instagram mindlessly because a lot of times I didn't even really think about what I was doing. It was so ingrained. And I would always constantly go to see if I had any more likes, if I had any comments, if I had any DMs, who'd followed me recently. And then while I was doing all that, I would then find myself again just scrolling mindlessly. I found that it had a detrimental effect on my self-esteem, the way I viewed myself, the way I kind of thought about my body and my body image. It had a very negative effect also on my happiness and my overall sense of well-being. And I just didn't like that. I started to realize that these images started to consume me. They started to warp the way that I viewed the world. And whenever I went places or had new experiences, my first instinct was to put it on Instagram stories, start recording for Instagram, to take a picture for Instagram and to somehow go live or somehow record the moment on Instagram as opposed to just living in the moment and enjoying it. Whenever I would have something happen in my life, I would frame it in the thoughts of, okay, how can I turn this into an Instagram story? How can I turn this around and put this on Instagram? And I didn't even realize how damaging that was until I started to feel towards the end of 2019 an overall sense of depression i started to feel weighed down there was this constant buzzing humming feeling in the back of my head and it was with me all day long i hated how connected i felt to my phone i hated how panicked i felt if i couldn't find my phone i found my phone always near me uh, i thought it was disturbing that when i woke up first thing in the morning, I went to check my phone first thing, I went on Instagram first thing, or even YouTube first thing. Uh, I just found that to be really, really detrimental to how I began my day, and I, and I found that a lot of times it started my day off on the wrong foot. 
I hated the fact that I slept with my phone either in bed with me or next to me. I hated the fact that throughout the day my phone was either on my hand or close by on my desk at work. You know, always in, in eyesight, in vision, uh, always looking for those notifications, right? Now there are a lot of studies about social media and sort of the dopamine effect that we get from likes, from notifications popping up. A lot of research done on the detrimental effects on Instagram and other social medias on our self-esteem, on our body image, on the way that we look at the world, the way we view our surroundings, the way we frame the things that happen to us, the way we frame our memories and our experiences. So I could definitely find some articles for you, but if you just do even just a, a short Google search, you will find a plethora of articles and people who have done in-depth studies on, you know, basically the harmful effects on social media and how to kind of avoid that. And to avoid that, honestly, is to limit your use of social media. So now that I've explained to you kind of where I was towards the end of last year, I want to talk a little bit more about how digital media, digital media, yes, I, I suppose digital media has played a, you know, a detrimental role in my development in the past decade. Um, especially, specifically this video, we are talking about Instagram since that is my social media drug of choice. Uh, this past decade did see the rise of Instagram and also I began to feel not enough physically not enough. I could never measure up to the Instagram models and the influencers. My lifestyle didn't feel accomplished enough. I felt I was lacking in some way and I hadn't done enough. I felt like my life wasn't good enough. It wasn't measuring up to not just my peers but to these social media influencers that I admired and looked up to. And their glossy images which have honestly replaced magazines for us just started to have a an effect on my self-esteem and on my overall happiness and well-being. So now I want to talk about, you know, what digital minimalism means to me and how I've effectively employed it these past 60 days or so and how it has made such a huge positive influence on my life and how it's impacted me in such a positive way and really changed my life for the better. So these days I don't really go on social media much. I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, you, you will notice that I have rarely posted on my stories the past month or so. I would say the last 45 days or so. I've rarely posted on my stories. You'll also notice that I've rarely posted period and my usage of the app has decreased exponentially, dramatically, just it's insane now that I'm no longer in that mind space, in that headspace, how much time I was really spending on the app. It's shocking, the things that I could have been doing, the ways that I could have been enjoying my life and living in the moment were all spent and wasted scrolling and, and consuming myself with this social media. So I'm not going to say that I'm leaving social media because I do enjoy it to some aspects, but I am able to say that because of my digital minimalism practices, I have essentially neutralized the negative effects that social media, Instagram was having on me before. I noticed that I have a much better body image. I've actually gone back to the gym and I noticed that I'm overall more happy with myself, how I look, how I feel. I've noticed that I have almost taken these steps uh, to better myself, better my health. I'm drinking more water, I'm taking my vitamins more often, I'm more present and in the moment. Now when great things happen and I'm experiencing just great days, I don't automatically think about putting it on Instagram and opening up my Instagram story to post. I don't think about taking a photo for Instagram. I now more than ever I'm able to live in the moment and truly enjoy it and soak it in for what it is and let it pass without the need to document and show it to others. I no longer feel the need to frame you know, memories and events around social media or for social media because I no longer feel the need to prove myself to anyone. I no longer feel the need to showcase my life in this better light for anybody. I'm just enjoying my life, I'm in the moment, and I'm happy. When I'm with my friends, I don't feel the moment need to Snapchat or Instagram or post about it. I just enjoy my time with my friends and live in the moment. This has cut down on my usage of the app, my time on the app has bettered my self-esteem, 
has cleared up the cloudiness, the buzzing sound that always seemed to be going on throughout the day in the back of my mind is gone. I don't have headaches anymore. My eyes are less tired. I've become more productive. I've actually had time to do things that I thought I never had time to do before, like weekly cleanings of my house, deep cleaning my carpets once every couple weeks, grocery shopping extensively, folding clothes, organizing things. My writing has definitely taken a bigger up a bigger chunk of time. I have more time to read and more time to just relax. You know, I feel a lot more relaxed and at peace with myself and my life in general. So with my desire to no longer go on the app, uh, I feel like it was kind of the switch that just happened in my brain. I just got really tired of going on Instagram so much. I hated how dependent I felt I was on it. I hated how addicted I felt to it. And I hated, hated, hated feeling the need to always have my phone on me. You know, I grew up in a time where we didn't really have cell phones. I didn't get my first cell phone until I was 18. And just reflecting back on the decade, I realized that even when I was in college, you know, we didn't have social media and I really didn't have my phone glued to my hand at all times. My phone would be in my bag or my pocket or the bottom of my purse for hours at a time until I needed it. I remember at one time in college, I couldn't afford my phone bill and I didn't have a phone for a full month and it didn't stop anything. I still saw my friends, I still met up with people on time, I still had social engagements, and my life was perfectly fine. And I actually enjoyed not having a phone because it cut down on, you know, the people I didn't really want to want to contact me, contacting me, and it was very peaceful. Now it's like we can't imagine a time when we don't have our phones and how much social media has consumed us that we are now attached to our phones and have them with us within eyesight or in our hands at all times. Notice how many times in a day you reach for your phone and automatically go to open up a social media app. Whether it be Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat or TikTok, it doesn't have to be Instagram for you. Everybody has their vice or their drug of choice. And just notice how much you walk around with your phone in your hand and always have it near you, maybe on the couch or in bed, how you just wake up and scroll in the mornings or before you go to sleep. How much time you spend when you use the restroom, it's all your phone, you take your phone with you. We take our phones with us everywhere. They are literally an extension of us. And I just found that to be really creepy and very unhealthy. I didn't like how dependent I felt on it and I wanted to break that habit. And with that switch mentally came just naturally me just realizing how detrimental how much time I was spending on Instagram was to my mental and emotional health and also how much I wanted to create space and build healthy habits and how I use social media so that I can kind of take that into this new decade that we are now in. And also I just wanted to enjoy life and spend more time in the moment and soak more things up in real time and just live and be fully present. Because the thing is when we're on social media or recording things to put on Instagram, we're not fully enjoying the moment, we're not fully present and that just takes away some of the joy of life and what we're living and what we're experiencing. You know, there, we're always constantly distracted and I didn't like that about how I was living my life. So digital minimalism has definitely changed my life for the better. I plan on continuing it into 2020 and I plan on continuing it for the rest of my life. It is a, a lifestyle choice. It is not a crash diet or anything like that. It's definitely a lifestyle choice and it's one that I am fully and thoroughly enjoying and I'm so happy that I made this change. Um, I did also notice that I was just growing tired of social media. It just became monotonous and boring and uncreative and unimaginative and uninteresting. Now, don't get me wrong, there are definitely positives to social media. You know, it helps to bring the world together. You can learn so much. You can really connect and network. You can build your brand, build your business. You can make money from it. You can really become more socially aware and, you know, talk to people and make friends. I'm aware of all the positives, but at times I feel like the negatives can outweigh the positives and I feel like the negatives are what's really detrimental mentally affecting people affecting their mental health affecting the way they view themselves their self-esteem their body image affecting people in the sense that it's, you know in the newer, newer generation that has grown up with nothing but social media people are using it to to cyber bully and put down people and degrade and cancel culture and so many negatives that come with it and I feel that when we can learn to step back and use it in a healthy and responsible way then we're able to get the benefits of it without succumbing so much to the negative side effects or the negative uh, parts of it 
So that is my video in a nutshell. I know I didn't go too much into digital minimalism and what it really means, but again, I will link articles in the description box that you know are able to let you know you know how this term was coined what it really means and some research behind that and what I'm really here to share with you is what I've changed what I'm doing moving forward how much better it's made my life how much clearer my thoughts are and just how much happier I uh, am I feel more whole I feel at peace and life is great so I'm definitely definitely a huge fan of digital minimalism and I'll be continuing that moving forward for the rest of my life or for as long as social media is around. So that is it for this video. Thank you all so much for joining me. Again, please remember to subscribe, like this video if you liked it, and I will catch you in my next video. Bye everyone. Mwah!